Hello everybody, Adam here with the United Prop Builders and in today's video we are sponsored by Industrial Polymers Corporation. Now what they've done for us today is send us a sample of their FlexFoam 300 and we're going to take it out for a test drive to show you what you can use it for, what it does, and what it can do for you. Now before we begin, I would like to take a chance to thank Industrial Polymers for their support. If you want to get any of their products, our website and contact information will be in the description below. Now, before we get started, we're going to talk about some safety. What you're going to need is safety glasses or other eye protection, a respirator, gloves, and possibly a long sleeve shirt and pants. Now, the reason for it is, like all chemicals we use in the prop building society, they can cause harm to your body. Whether it be irritating, burning, lung disease, etc. Now, the reason why I bring this up is because many of our younger viewers do not take the necessary precautions to protect themselves against the chemicals, and that hurts them medically later. Now, we're going to take this outside and see what it can do. Now, like we said before, safety is very important, so be sure to put on your safety gloves. After your gloves are on, make sure to put on your respirator so you don't get any of those nasty chemicals into your lungs to cause damage. After you have your glasses on, your safety gloves on, and your respirator, go ahead and start opening your chemicals. We are going to start with the A component. And after we took the lid off, we realized there was a tab that this has cut through. Now, we weren't exactly prepared for that, so we just picked up uh, the screwdriver we had lying next to us and punched a hole through it. It's the same thing. Then pick up your A container and start pouring it in to as much as you desire. Now this will pour really slow because it is a thick liquid compound. And this mixture is a 100 to 91 mixture, which means one part component A to 0.9 parts component B. So after we have our A measured out, we make sure to set it aside and put the lid back on for safety and precautions. Then we move on to opening our B after we check the level of our A. You open B just like a regular paint bucket. You take the screwdriver and pry the lid open. Now I will warn you, this stuff pours out fast. It's thinner than I thought. I thought it was going to be thick like component A, but it is not. So just a little bit and it should almost be even with A. Just a tad lower. And then after we do some cleanup to make sure our workstation is good and workable, we close up component B for safety. Now after we have them, make sure you have a third cup or measuring device because we need to combine components A and B together. Make sure you get as much as possible in there so you're not wasting any of your Flex Foam 300. And you can go ahead and set your measuring cups aside. Stir, make sure everything gets mixed together nice and thoroughly. For this, we just used our screwdriver because it was the closest thing to us. And then, after it's all stirred up, go ahead and pour into your mold. Make sure you get as much as you can in there so you're not wasting any of your Flex Foam 300 from industrial polymers. And 
and now we're going to take a look at the time lapse of how it grew. Now, after about 20 minutes from editing the video you are seeing now, it it's perfectly good. It was probably good a little earlier, but now I know for sure it's good. So let's head on back down to the studio and check out what's happened. Welcome back, guys. Now, we just took our piece out of the mold, and let's go over what happened. Now, this end came out pretty bad. You can see it's all roughly not smooth like this. Now it's probably my fault, because when I made my Lego mold, I didn't spray a releasing agent inside of this so it would come out crisp, clean, and smooth. There's like some residue on here, on the Lego pieces from this. As you can see, it's all torn up. So if you want to, spray it down so you don't have to deal with that. Now it's not, it's not difficult to get off. It comes right off of this with a little bit of rubbing. It's just going to be very time consuming to get all the residue off your Lego pieces or whatever mold you are using. Yeah, it comes off very easy. But the, it's smooth, squishy. As you can see, it's like a stress ball squishy. And it's pretty nice. It has some leniency to it. You can't really you can break it but it takes quite a bit of force now the perfect thing I can think of for this right now just off the top of my head is if you're making a helmet and you need padding or any kind of armor and you need padding on the inside this actually feels pretty nice yeah and you can probably also use it for just about anything else you can think of with foam you can probably carve this if you really had the tools to do it. But if you get just a tiny amount of this and you make some kind of nice mold, you can probably make some really nice foam inserts for armor and helmets. Now that's the review. I'll go ahead and show you guys some close-ups of this. And remember to check up Industrial Polymer Corporation because they'll hook you up with the good stuff. See you guys later. There's the residue from me not molding it. But yeah, 